Good morning, Wesley family. Glad you're all here. Uh, we have a good weekend. And for those online, join us there. Welcome as well. If you all stand, we'll get started. Oh, 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 oh. 
It's nice to see many of your faces, your whole faces. I do want to say that uh, we have moved, obviously, most of you got the memo, all of you got the memo, that we have moved to a mask optional policy. Having said that, uh, there's some folks that still aren't there yet. We're going to respect everybody. We're going to respect everybody's space. We're going to respect everybody's decision uh, because that's that's what disciples of Jesus Christ do. Uh, so let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for this Pentecost Sunday. God, we thank you for sending down uh, the power of your Holy Spirit. God, without your Holy Spirit, um, this is just a list of rules, uh, but with your Holy Spirit, it is uh, the powerful good news of Jesus Christ. And God, we pray that setting everything else aside, that God, that you would open every heart and every mind and every life to the presence of your Spirit here in this place today and the word that's going to be proclaimed. And God, that you would change lives with the power of your Holy Spirit, even today in this place, or wherever this message goes today. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue worship this morning. We started with kind of a new one. Let's roll back a little bit. Let's praise the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Jesus 
Hi guys, how are you today? Good, good. So, oh, guess we're coming. Somebody grab a cell phone and take a picture. <laughs> so it's good to be back up here on the on the steps, huh? All right. So today, today is the day of Pentecost. Right? And today we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming. And the Holy Spirit did a very, very big miracle on the day of Pentecost. But first, do you guys know what the language barrier is? Do you know what the language barrier is? Well, like if, if you didn't speak English, and I spoke English, I spoke only English, and you didn't speak English, then, then he, I couldn't talk to you, could I? You couldn't understand me. That's the language barrier. And so, you know, last week I talked about my Apple Watch that tells me I'm alive, and so Apple's helped us with the language barrier, too. So there's this little app on my phone that translates stuff. So let me try this. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say my English thing, and I'm going to see what it sounds like in a couple different languages. Okay, so I'm going to speak into it. Good morning, children. Welcome to church. That's English. Now, let's hear it in French. Make sure the volume's up. Good. 
Anybody speak French? Okay, let's see. You don't know whether that was right or wrong, do you? How about, Ch how about Chinese? Let's do Chinese. All right. Anybody know what, anybody recognize that? No. Okay. Let's try one more. How about, oh, Spanish is too easy. Spanish is too easy. Uh, let's do German. I had a grandfather that spoke German. Let's do German. There you go. So, actually that sounded kind of familiar to me. Like I said, I had a grandfather that spoke German. Um, so, but on Pentecost, see the problem was is that, that up until Jesus came, right, God just really concentrated on one country, just the Jewish people. And, but after Jesus came, God wanted the good news to get out to the whole world, right? And he didn't have time for the disciples to learn all these languages that they were supposed to preach in. And so, guess what he did? He just zap. He taught them. Like, like they just started talking. Like one guy just started talking in, in Spanish, let's say. And another guy just started talking in German. And another guy just started talking in French. And so, so that means, that tells us that, that God wants the gospel to go out to all the world, to all the people, to every language, to every nation, to every ethnic group. God wants the gospel to go out to the whole world, and he wants to use us to do that. But here's the best news. Now, God may, just, God may not just magically teach us, I shouldn't say magically, God may not just miraculously teach us a new language, but God will help us to share the gospel. God will help us know what to say and give us those opportunities if we are willing. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for breaking down the language barrier and all the barriers that separate people. Help us to break down barriers too and share the gospel with everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis. Oh, I'm sorry, I was supposed to announce this. Sorry, let me back up. You can leave that up there. I'll get to it in a second. So, uh, good morning again. Welcome. Uh, we are glad that you're here. I already referenced our, our new uh, mask policy as we're moving forward. Um, Ad Council's meeting tomorrow night. We're probably going to talk about some other things, and so stay tuned, especially for this next newsletter. Uh, the June newsletter will have some information for you. Uh, there's a couple of thank yous in the bulletin I want to draw your attention to. And then finally, just a reminder, there is a box in the back of the sanctuary for your offerings uh, this morning. Your generosity is appreciated. Uh, so now, uh, our first reading, uh, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Listen to the word of God. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If it's one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this. 
that nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. The word of God for the people of God. Our second, our second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Again, listen to the word of God. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one of them heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language, Parthenians, Medes, and Lamatites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judah and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Life is full of barriers and also of stories of barriers of being broken. Some of those barriers are physical or technological barriers like the sound barrier, which was broken by Chuck Yeager in 1947, or the four-minute mile, which was broken by Roger Bannister in 1954. Other barriers are social, like the language barrier, or the culture barrier, or the economic barrier, or the racial barrier. Some of them are simply natural, others of them are sinful. The way we separate ourselves and categorize ourselves against one another. The language barrier began at the Tower of Babel as a punishment for the pride and disobedience of the people. So I need to explain this um, because it seems rather strange that God would want to separate people like this, but but let me let me ask you, Bible scholars, um, what was the first positive commandment 
that God gave to Adam and Eve. The first negative commandment was don't eat from the tree. What was the first positive commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the, fill the earth. Cover the face of the earth. Right? Spread out. Right? That's what God wanted people to do. Spread out and fill the earth. Um, but of course, what, what did the people want to do at the Tower of Babylon? They said, we don't want to be scattered. We don't want to spread out. We want to stay together. So you have disobedience there. And then there's also pride because what did they say they were going to do? They were going to build a tower to what? Make it, well, they were going to build a tower to heaven. I'll get to that in a second. They were going to make a name for themselves. Because that's what God put human beings on earth to do, right? Is to make a name for ourselves. That sounds like God's plan, doesn't it? No, not at all. They wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to glorify themselves. They wanted to build a tower to heaven. Right? That's idolatry. And it's interesting to me the way this text is written because they said, we're going to build the tower up to heaven. We're going to build the tower up to heaven. And then what does God do? God said, it says that God came down. So I wish you to imagine, they're trying to build a tower to heaven. And God's up there like, what are you doing? What are they doing? <laughs> so much for their tower, right? And so God confuses their language and scatters them. So that they fulfill God's mission and fill the earth. But God still has a plan. Because out of all these scattered people, God is going to choose one man, and through one man, He's going to choose one family, and out of one family, He's going to build one nation, and that is Abraham and his family and the nation of Israel. And out of that one man, that one family, that one nation, God is going to bring a Savior who would one day break down every barrier reconcile the world to God and reunite the people of the world with one another under one banner, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That was the problem. Jesus is the plan. And today is the day of Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday when the church celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit, this is when that promise of Jesus, that, that plan of God, bursts forth onto the world scene. Because one of the things that the Holy Spirit came to do was to break down the barriers that separate people from God and from one another. So I want you to understand, anytime you see a barrier Barriers are different than boundaries. Anybody read the Wesley word this week? Barriers are different than boundaries. Boundaries are there for a reason. Barriers we need to get rid of. Uh, there's an industry of barriers and boundaries. But anytime you see a barrier, that is because the gospel is not there. That's because the Spirit is not there. Because everywhere the Gospel goes and everywhere the Spirit goes, the barriers that separate people from God and that separate people from one another, those barriers fall. And I want you to notice, before well, I'll come back. And as a symbol of that, as a symbol of that breaking down of those barriers, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, supernaturally broke down the language barrier. Just kicked it down. See, for, for, for years and years, as a matter of fact, the disciples would have grown up in it from generation to generation. They would have said that, that they would have grown up with this mindset that, that you're God's chosen people. That you're God's chosen people. You know, God speaks Hebrew, right? You speak God's language, you're God's people, God picked you, you're the best, you're awesome, 
and everybody else is not. Right? Now, of course, we know better. We know now, of course, that God speaks King James English. Right? Um, good enough for Jesus, good enough for me. Right? Jesus didn't speak King James English. He does speak King James English, but that's not what he spoke when he was on the earth. Um, but now, but now, God is going to break down that barrier. God is going to break down that barrier in no uncertain terms, supernaturally, so people understand that it's God doing it. The disciples aren't, the disciples aren't forming a committee, they aren't starting a political movement, they aren't organizing a protest. The Holy Spirit is zapping them and they're getting done. It's the power of God, not the power of people that breaks down the barriers that separate us. When we try to do it on our own, we screw it up every time. We need the Holy Spirit. The gospel breaks down the barriers. We're not trying to break down barriers. I want you to understand that. We're not trying to break down barriers. We're trying to preach the gospel. The gospel breaks down the barriers. We can't get it backwards. The gospel breaks down the language barrier. The gospel breaks down the culture barrier. The gospel breaks down the ethnic and racial barrier. Look at the text. After, after we get to talking about the language barrier, Peter's going to say that, that, that God promised to pour his spirit on all flesh, on Jewish flesh and Gentile flesh, on European flesh and upon African flesh and upon Asian flesh. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon the young and the old. He breaks down the generation barrier. I'm going to pour it out on even my servants. He's going to break down the economic barrier. He said, I'm going to pour it out on men and on women. He's going to break down the gender barrier. Read this text and watch barrier after barrier after barrier that separates people from God fall down before the power of the Holy Spirit and the proclaimed word. That's what we need to be about. There's probably a year's worth of sermons in Acts chapter 2. Don't worry, I'm not going to preach them. But every year we can concentrate on something else. But this year, this Pentecost, I want us to concentrate on the Holy Spirit's power to break down the barriers that first of all stand between us and God. That's the sin barrier, right? We can't get past that on our own, and we can't get past any of these barriers on our own. So God breaks down the sin barrier that separates us from Him, and then He breaks down all the barriers that separate us from one another, be it language, be it culture, be it race, be it ethnicity, be it be it political opinion, be it be it gender, be it age, be it economic status. God breaks down all of those barriers so that his gospel can go into all the world. So that his church, you and I, can be enabled and empowered to share that gospel with all creation so that every tribe, tongue, and like Chuck Yeager and the Sound Barrier, or Roger Bannister and the Four Minute Mile, or the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Let us let the Holy Spirit work in us to break down every barrier that separates people from God and from each other. Let us break the barriers with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, we confess that while some of, some of the barriers that we experience in our lives are natural, others of them are put up by us. 
God, we have built walls between ourselves to make ourselves feel safe, to make ourselves feel comfortable. But God, those barriers must fall. Those barriers must fall. God, send down your Holy Spirit, and among all the things that your Spirit promised us, God, break down the barriers that separate us from you and from one another. God, all these artificial things that we erect, all these indifferent distinctions that we make, God, break them down. Break them down with the power of your word and the power of your spirit. God, we pray for our church. We pray that you bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church and for this annual conference in our Bishop Will Reyes District and our Superintendent Doug. We pray for our community, our nation, our world in these troubled times. God, we pray for all the people and places who are in need, all those that are sick, all those that are suffering, all those that are struggling, all those that are trapped in sin. God, we pray for healing and for peace and for freedom and for comfort and for guidance. God, we pray for continued recovery and progress with the coronavirus here in our community, in our nation. And God, we especially want to lift up places that are struggling more than we are, places like India and others. God, we pray for political and racial and social and spiritual healing in our world. We pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our military and for our veterans. We pray for our law enforcement and our first responders. We pray for our healthcare workers and all those that serve our community. We pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for our government, our economy, and our environment. God, we pray that you would fill this church with your Holy Spirit. God, fill this place, fill this people, and most importantly, fill this preacher with your Holy Spirit, so that we might do your work in the world. We pray that you hear us as we offer up to you the prayers of each and every heart. We are allowed, saying, in Jesus' name, Amen. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent in our hearts. God, you know our every need, and we do not know how to pray. Your Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, as you've heard us, we pray that you hear us now, as we lift up our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you stand and join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ, experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love.